Hey everybody, the Bong is here, ready to give you a brand new Let's Play! Chronicles of a Dark Lord, Episode 2, War of the Abyss, for the PC, and this is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. Alright, I actually recorded Part 1 earlier, and I set it up in Bandicam to record the game, rather than an actual window. And when it did that, an FMV that was loaded after the first battle would not appear. So I set it up to a record a screen window capturing the game in its entirety, and the FMV did get captured. So this is actually a second take of this Let's Play that was chosen in the 2015 Christmas special. And since I'm far enough through Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, why not just start this game now rather than wait till after I finish that game? Okay, so this takes place, like, at the end of Chronicles of the Dark Lord Episode 1, Tides of Fate, which, basically, the four of us had to fight Xeon. The end party is a little different. I mean, when I finished that Let's Play, I had Galena as my fourth party member, rather than Drea Nightshade, who is a vampire. Right now, the person who has the first turn is Isis Lee, and she's our healer. She doesn't have really have all the magic that she had before. So we're not going to heal and instead attack. As you can see, Zeon was the final boss in the first game. He was the atrocity of the gods who was sent to destroy all of Korra, which is the world of this game. Magus Lee is the main character who I'm controlling right now. And right now he only has two attacks. Onslaught attacks for like six times for major damage. And Dark Embrace is 60 MP, but it deals massive dark damage to all enemies. So I'm going to select that one. Because that one will do more damage. Alright, next is Zeria Lee, who is the wife of Magus Lee. She has Strike and Havoc Arts. Sekarin is basically like healing yourself. And Glory of Chaos does massive non-elemental damage to all enemies. So we're going to select that. Okay, Drea, as I said before, is a vampire as she has Thaumaturgy as her second ability. Blood Drain takes HP from one enemy to replenish your own, but it doesn't do a lot. But Duchess Wrath is tri-elemental damage to all enemies. Right now we got an easy battle because this is just the intro of what happened at the end of Episode 1. As you can see, Zeon is a lot easier than he was in the first game when he was an actual final boss. Essentially, this is a battle you're supposed to win. I think you'd have to try very, very hard to lose. And I don't know what happens if you do. Maybe you just get sent back to the main menu? Pretty sure that's what happens. So, dismiss that idea completely. Okay, Xan should be close to death. Only got, what, 38,000 HP left. Starts with 100,000, so that's nothing to worry about too much. I'd say, like, a couple more attacks and he's done. You'll be done, son. I don't even need to heal. It's too bad Isis doesn't have her offensive magic called Shadean Might. That's what she had at the first game, that she leveled up enough. And we'll try Onslaught this time. And Xeon is defeated. Game over, everyone. <laughs> I love how you just taunt people after you win a battle. So we get the Inferni Diadem and the Key to the Abyss. We needed those two items along with the Corinthite to seal Xeon back into the Abyss. Whenever then a scene loads. Okay, there we go. This is... impossible! I... I was so close to achieving perfection for this world! But you did. You're dead. Before he revives again, we must use the Corinthi as the Fae instructed us. I kept it safe and covered just as you asked, Magus. Thank you. Well? Hurry it up, Lee! Read the damn inscription on the altar and let the Corinthi do its thing! I consecrate this seal with the entrusted wisdom of the unified light and darkness. 
I call upon the power of the Corinthi to seal the body and soul of the atrocity of all that lives. The Corinthi just shattered! We have no time to waste. We must depart immediately. I agree with the Emperor. Let's get our asses out of here while we can! I can do it. I can get us out of here. But I need everyone to be close. You are the lady! Move! Oh, that got us out of there. And there you have it, Majara. The Corinthi shattered, and we are unsure if Zeon was sealed or not. The only problem, though, is how to find out for sure. Right now, we're just speculating. There must be a way to find out. A thousand pardons, your majesties! But I have news! We just received word that the abyss ruptured and looked like it was going to close, but it did not. There was some great pulse, and it started expanding once again! There are thousands of abyssals now pouring out from it! No! This cannot be! How? How is this happening? I bet you a thousand staring it is not Zeon. Who else could be behind it? The only one that could have inherited Zeon's essence as his vessel. Anto Calius. So by killing Anto, we only... Did him a damn favor! He wanted us to kill him, so that he could get Zeon's essence to fuse with his own! He played us all like fools. He knew what we were going to do. Once Anto was ready, we could expect him to send the full might of his armies against everyone in this world. There will be nowhere safe to go. Cytheria? So, it has finally come to pass. The War of the Abyss is now upon us. At this child, Winro will become a great Dark Lord of us all. Yet, this very same child will be the one to save us all in a war so terrible, so fearsome, that it will blot out any other war known to us. It has a name. The War of the Abyss. It had begun the day when I was imbued with the powers of the great dark god Hazizus. Or perhaps it began the day I was born? It does not matter, I suppose. For I was set to achieve my destiny. I thought that perhaps the wars I led against the Rim Kingdoms would be the fulfillment of that destiny, though they were far from it. I became embroiled in a conflict against an adversary none of us could have prepared for. The enemy I speak of is the antithesis of everything that has ever lived or existed. The Abyss. Our war took us into those depths where our enemy was waiting for us. We soon encountered the one that had summoned the Abyss to the mortal plane, the traitorous Anto Calius. After defeating him, we took on the atrocity of the gods himself and tried to seal him and the Abyss once again. The sealing was a failure, and the Abyss began to expand again. It was then that we knew the atrocity of the gods had planned for this and chosen a vessel before his defeat. As we prepared for all-out war against the Abyss, we knew at that moment whom the atrocity of the gods had chosen for a vessel. All of us, the world over, knew it the moment we heard them singing of him from the Abyss. One year later, because everything is alright now. <sighs> you ready for this, Galena? Yes. I've been ready for this for a long time now, Zyria. Thank you for agreeing to stand with me. How could I not? Now, it's time for the bride to make her entrance. Zyria, are you sure you're okay with all this? 
I know that you and Magus had a pretty bitter divorce after you confessed to him about sleeping with Majara. Don't worry about it, Galena. My new relationship with Magus is working out fine. I would even go so far as to say that he's pleased that Majara has found happiness. I'm glad to hear it. Alright, time for me to get married. I really am happy for you, Galena. Let's do this. So yeah, same-sex marriages and relationships were a thing in this universe. And you know, that's fine too. I mean, it shows a lot of progress as to how things have gone. By the love of the fallen goddess Shaddai, and the strength of the dark god Hazizus, do I now begin this most cherished of ceremonies. Do you, Galena Dyrene Gray, take Magus Dragon Lee to be your husband, through war and strife, in peace and tranquility, for as long as you both shall live? Yes, I do. Now do you, Magus Dragon Lee, take Galena Dyrene Gray to be your wife? Through war and strife, in peace and tranquility, for as long as you both shall live? Indeed, I do. Then, as High Empress of the Kassarth Empire, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride, Magus. No! Not now! Cytheria? What's wrong? That... Guards! What was that? The Abyss has launched a strike against Tezroth, Emperor! Our forces are assembling for a counterattack! Magus, you must go and thwart this strike! I will lead our forces here to defend the Citadel! You heard, Majara! Go to Tezroth and do what you do best! You don't need to worry about us here, okay? Very well. I will see you soon, my beloved. My wife. Commander Krista, Commander Desan, you are with me. I'm ready when you are, Emperor. You can always count on me, Emperor. Damn! They must have broken off from the main contingent to keep us busy here as a diversion! Let us make quick work of these fools. Death to the enemies of the Abyss! <coughs> Alright, now for our first official battle in this story. Alright, so we have Magus, Kristair, and Desan, who is the daughter of Magus in Syria. She's also our spellcaster, so make good use of her. Alright, Ignis does fire damage, Frigis does ice, and Thunarum, Thunarum does thunder. I remember the first game, Ignis actually had a uh, charge time, but these two did not. Well, you don't have to worry about it here, but I find Thunarm is better against these Abyssal Grunts. And it does like one shock and it kills them. Now Krista with a C, and I say that because there are two Krista Ayers, one with a C who does sabotage effects against enemies, and Krista with a K has blonde hair but she does buffs for her allies. So I don't feel like Vitality Curse is good enough to use. I'll just use a regular attack. Ooh, -ho -ho, a crit, nice. All right, now we got Dark Arts. And Venom Slice you can use for free. It has the same amount of damage as a regular attack, but it has a chance to reduce poison. So you're better off using that. And we got poison on him, nice. Oh, he only took 11 damage though. And he attacked Desun, which is not good, because, well, she's a spellcaster. Poison does, like, an amount of damage based on your max HP. So if your max HP is really high, you're taking a lot of poison damage. And vice versa, of course. Another one bites the dust. Nice. Oh, I would've liked to have a potion, though. You were the one that got hit. We have to get to the city. must drive their filth out of the city. We will have to search the city to make sure we route them all. Then we will hunt them all down and destroy them. That is our mission. What about the High Empress and the others? Majara and the others are likely fighting the enemy already. They will be fine. We have our own task to deal with. Engage the enemy! Okay. Alright, so let's go to the menu first. As you can see, you can no longer save anywhere you want now as you could in the first game. 
Scion Grid is basically where you learn new abilities. So yeah, you don't level up to learn abilities anymore. More on that later because it's not available to us. Your Bestiary is also a new thing you can have. And it shows you like uh, what enemies you've come across and how many are left to encounter. Okay, I noticed that the fire crackling is still going on in the background. So Abyssal Grunt is the only enemy we come across. And you can use page up and page down, which I like uh, hotkey to certain buttons on my controller. And the other one on the very bottom is Zeon, so let's not worry about that. You can go to your status to take a look at each of your character stats. You can also notice that your weapons have levels now. That is also tied to your Scion grid, so more on that later once we actually have that available to us. So you get little descriptions of each character as well, not to mention their title. Well, actually their titles show up under here too, which is pretty nice. Emperor! The enemy has advanced on the city and is laying siege! We are here to assist you. Stand ready! This city will soon belong to the Abyss! Not if we have anything to do about it. Alright, so the soldier is actually going to join us as a guest ally. Which is actually pretty neat. I don't think we've had that in the first game. Oh, couldn't get a crit that time. That's disappointing. Alright, we'll go with a Venom Slice on this guy. I think the soldier should be able to kill the guy in the back. Wow, just enough. Nice. Okay, if they target mages for physical attacks, that's ideal. Because he can handle them. Well, at least we're getting money out of this. And sadly, these Abyssal Grunts do not drop items. Remain here and stay on your guard. More may come this way. Yes, my lord! Alright, so watch out for the fire over here, because you do take gradual damage just by walking on it. If you find a good scene, perfect. And if you're standing on the fire, it'll just flash red. Oh, you got an ether here. It tells you how many items you got, not to mention a description of the item, and how much it would normally cost. So that's actually pretty neat as well. You can go to your armor and your key items. And you can actually sort your items as well. Which is actually pretty cool. Like, these three items you can use in, on the field and in battle. Scions are something new that's related to the Scion Grid. Which, again, I will wait till later, once we actually unlock it, to showcase how it works. So there are no random encounters in this game. You actually have to run into the enemies to battle them. So that's another neat touch as well. Kind of reminds me of Chrono Trigger in some way. Uh, d -Sun could definitely use some more health. Uh, you know what? I think we can go a little bit longer without healing. My lord! This way appears to be clear. Why are you standing in the fire? What the? No! Emperor! Kill them all. Alright, so we don't get a soldier to help us this time because he's dead. Alright, we don't really need him. We'll just use Preachus again. You know, famous talk show host, Freegis Philbin. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, that was also a terrible damage, but we'll make the most out of it. I think I should just kill this guy. Because Desun is not in a good place right now in terms of health. In fact, she's already a critical. We are better off just trying to kill these guys now. Actually, I'm better off with the narrow one. I feel that does more damage to the Abyssal Grunts than Freegis would. This soldier is dead. But at least he had a potion on him. If he had actually used it, he would not have been dead. Ah, that's much better. That is pretty cool that it actually tells you what it does. Yeah, Garudan Feathers can heal your HP by 15% of your total amount, and it removes, well, Fatal. That's pretty cool. Like, it's so detailed compared to the first game. Emperor! The enemy is using their damned invisibility to get the jump on us! Come on, you sons of bitches! I'm going to assume that these enemies cannot stay invisible forever. Like, if they could have stayed invisible forever, why couldn't they just kill the soldiers while still being stealthed? Okay, I'm getting a little bit of a delay here. 
I don't know if Norton is going on in the background. I should have, like, uh, put it in silent mode. <laughs> so, the game's gonna look a little framey, unfortunately, for now. Until that matter gets resolved. But it shouldn't look too bad. Alright, kill this guy. Okay, I think the, uh, task it was set to do is stopped. Because it looks like the game just went back to normal. There we go. Hopefully that doesn't interfere with the recording so much. Stay here. We will drive the rest of them from the city. Yes, Emperor! Alright, we'll go on this way. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you can actually change your options as well. Like to change the volume of like the music and sound effects. Set it to auto dash if you want to, which I got set to dash. Instant text will just affect like how the dialogue scrolls. And you can go after the title screen. So a lot of things they've added to this game to make it so much better. Is there anything over here? Nothing. Alright. We're just taking unnecessary damage. And we can't go this way because of all the holes. Therefore we have to like go all the way to the left. Again, it's so nice they have no random encounters so you don't have to worry about fighting all the time. Don't bother going into any of the houses because they're locked. Dark gods above! Where are they all coming from? Pull it together, soldier. This pathetic display of weakness will not be tolerated. Emperor, we cannot hold them back. They're going to slaughter us. Or worse, they will make us into one of them. Emperor, please. We have to retreat while we still can. Here, I'll just poke you and then slash you. Your spinelessness has earned you your just reward. <laughs> Damn glad I'm not on this good side. That man should have known better. Nissan, Krista, prepare yourselves. I sense them near. Oh, there's only two this time. Okay, Krista's actually pretty beat up right now. Alright, let me test out Ignis, see how much damage that would do. Oh, just enough. Oh, beautiful! Oh, man, that only needed two attacks. That should be the last of them, for now. Emperor, we should head back to the Citadel and check on the others. I agree. Though I'm sure they did fine. The High Empress is not exactly a pushover, nor are Zyria and Galena, for that matter. Emperor? Nothing. It is nothing. Come, let us head back to the Citadel. Alright, Chapter 1, The War of the Abyss. I like how this game is broken up into different chapters as well. Meanwhile, in the throne room, one month later... Commanders, report. Emperor! Hi, Empress! We have confirmed reports that Octavian has been overrun by the enemy. The land where Octavian once stood is now part of the Abyss. No! Eleanor! What? What about Eleanor? Did she make it out? We have no word on whether Empress Eleanor survived or not. I'm sorry, Viceroy. I see. What is the latest regarding the Rim Kingdoms and Sanifaria? I'll take this one, Krista. Emperor, it appears that so far Goldenhorn and Ivory Mist have been able to push back the enemy from their borders. However, during Ivory Mist's last encounter with the enemy, they suffered heavy losses. Queen Rena of Goldenhorn sent us a message stating that should the Abyss strike Ivory Mist again, then it is nearly certain that the kingdom will fall. <sighs> I do not suppose that you have any good news to report, Commander. Thankfully, I do, High Empress. Emperatrix Sapphire Senefaria has sent us a message confirming that the construction of their new fortress is complete. Due to this, Senefaria has become a launching point for coordinated strikes against the Abyss. We should take advantage of this, High Empress. I agree. Their new fortress represents an opportunity for us to take the fight to the enemy for a change. Yes. I quite agree as well. Hmm. I believe I've come up with a plan of attack that may shift the war back in our favor. You are going to propose that we strike at the very heart of the Abyss, are you not? That is exactly what I am proposing, Cytheria. Magus, that's suicide! For one thing, even if you actually survive long enough to get close, you wouldn't be able to get past the barrier. 
We also have to keep in mind that our trade routes with Obsidian Rose have been compromised due to the enemy. If we're going to launch any kind of massive strike, we're going to need supplies from Obsidian Rose first. Tiarna Desiree is going to need our help, though, to do it. There is also the matter of the circulating rumors of a major offensive against the Miri territories in the coming days. We will need to bolster our defenses across the span of this continent. Elion and Zelonia need to be ready if the rumors prove true. Very well. Our plan shall be threefold then. I will take Commanders Disan and Krista with me to Elion. After we inform Isis and Inari of our plans, we will then head for Sanifaria to pre prepare a coordinated offensive in taking down the barrier. Galena and Zyria will go to Obsidian Rose and speak with Tiarna, Tiarna Desiree about clearing those trade routes. Travel under cover of night and use our unmarked transport ship. <coughs> but be prepared should the enemy find you. If they find us, we'll make them wish they hadn't. Right, Galena? That's right. We'll get those trade routes cleared, Magus. You can count on us. Majara, you want to head for Zalonia with a contingent of soldiers. Make sure that King Kadar and Queen Trinity are ready for a possible invasion. Have no worry, Magus. I will see it done. Cytheria? Yes, High Empress? I leave Kasarth in your hands. Also, consult your mirrors. Any information that you can give us might prove useful. I will consult them immediately. Hi, Empress. Please be careful. Alright, we got ourselves a plan. Let's just hope it doesn't bite us in the ass later on. May the Honorable Darkness guide us all to good fortune on our endeavors. My beloved one. Magus, why did you send me to Obsidian Rose with Zyria? Why is it I cannot go with you? Galena, this is hard for me to say. However, it must be said. I could not focus completely on the battles yet to be fought if you had joined me. That and... And what, Magus? <sighs> I do not want to impose the cruelty of one of us bearing witness to the other's death. You and I know we are both embarking on missions that we may not return from. This is war. We must put aside what we feel for one another and focus on our missions. I've been in my fair share of wars. I know what has to be done. Just one last thing, Magus. What? The answer is yes, Magus. Yes? Yes to what? Yes. <coughs> I want to have children with you. That is what you have wanted, is it not? Yes. Yes, it is. Then when this war is over, we'll start trying to have a baby. If that doesn't motivate you to come back to me alive, then I don't know what will. I will come back to you, Galena. I vow this. I'm holding you to that, Magus. I should go. Zyria is doubtless waiting for me. May the path of the Honorable Darkness guide you both to good fortune. I love you, Magus. I always have, and I always will. I love you, too. Love you, just wait till she's gone before you say that. <laughs> We're ready, Emperor. We should head to Tezeroth first, and gather enough supplies for our journey north to Elion. Agreed. Let us head to Tezeroth. Okay, this is our opportunity to do a little bit of exploring, but I'd rather save that for the next episode, because this part's been going pretty long. Before we go, I noticed that there are a couple paintings over here. I have no idea what the second one is, but the first one is obviously the battle of, like, young mages versus his father, Exodus, in the first game. That was when he got the control of the Dark God Hazizah's power. So, I was going to explore the Citadel, but I feel like I'd rather wait till the next episode, because this part's been going pretty long, like I said before. Luckily, you can save using the Shenandorian crystals that are all around, but if you can't find any, you can save in the overworld. So I will be doing some exploring the Citadel because there are some items I like to buy and also some money I can find to buy items. There are no battles in the overworld so you can move around at your own leisure which is also pretty nice. Tezeroth is over there and of course the Citadel is right here. If you want to save, you just go right here. 
I'll just go over save file too, because that's the part where it wouldn't record the FMVs for some strange reason. Apparently they were just incompatible with my recording settings at the time. But anyways, I'm going to stop the video right here, and in the next part, we're going to go back to the Citadel, do what we need to do. Oh, wait a minute, the Scion Grid is actually available now. Okay, so the Scion Grid, how that works, is you actually just, like, select a character you want to upgrade. And you actually have to move over to them manually. Here, we can actually upgrade your Blade of Black Death. Right now, it's just at the standard level 1. So, once you get certain Wisdom Scions, you can move over to the next level. So, obviously, I don't have any of those Scions. And over here, it shows you, like, what Scions you need. Attribute Scions are for your stats. Skill Scions are for extra abilities. And Wisdom Scions allow you to move over to the next level. So, we can't worry about that yet, because we don't have any Scions at all. I feel like uh, the uh, interface of the Scion Grid is a little frustrating because you have to be very exact. Like, look, over here I cannot exit until I go on this spot directly. So, it is a little annoying in that regard, but it could have been a lot worse. Anyways, I'm going to stop here, and in the next part, we're going to do what I mentioned to do before. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching.